What's up guys, it's me, the Dumb Fanatic, and welcome to week two of season five of the Pokemon Premier League, obviously Division 1. Uh, last week we didn't go up to the best start, we did lose 3-0 uh, to Better Jack, as he is known, ironically. Um, or not so ironically, I guess, and the Melbourne Victory Star. So this week, week two, we are out uh, for a vengeance, I guess. You know, we're out for that win, we want that first win on the cards for the season. And we are facing Paul, aka Paulie Mac. Uh, and the West Coast Wingles, I believe they're called this season. Um, as you can see, teams on the board, um, pretty much what I expected from Paul on his team. Maybe not so much the Mesprit, um, but I can definitely play around the Mesprit, that's not a problem. Uh, on my team, I'll give you a brief overview, as obviously I don't have any team builders. We have got the Expert Belt, uh, especially offensive, Inferno for U-Turn, Hidden Power, Ice, Flamethrower, and Stealth Rocks. As you can probably tell, looking at his team, um, everything is weak to it, other than Toxapex. So Infernape is something that could be very crucial this game. Necrozma, again, similar set to last week, we've got Dark Pulse, Psychic, uh, Rock Polish, and the HP Fire with the Life Orb. Again, looking at Paul's draft overall, didn't have anything for that set. Um, and I have got Bulk in other means. Uh, Gudra, um, Leftovers sub free attacks, Dragon Pulse, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower. Um, very important this game because it takes on the Thunderous very well. It can also set up the sub very freely on the Toxapex, which I'm expecting is going to be one of his switch-ins to it. Um, potentially the Mesprit as well, depending on its set. So something that can do a lot of damage and obviously Flamethrower, Thunderbolt and Dragon Pulse. Really good coverage for his team. Um, late game choice band Speedy uh, Kartana. Four attacks, but I really only ever need Leaf Blade and Sacred Sword or Secret Sword. One of the two, I always forget which one it is that he actually gets. Um, we've got Max Physically Defensive, Babiri Berry, uh, Togekiss, obviously to try and take on the Sizzle because we've got Flamethrower on there. We've also got Defog because I was fully expecting Toxic Spikes because I haven't got uh, any Poison types. Oh, well, I have, sorry, being a Mega Beedrill, but looking at Paul's team, uh, he wasn't. there wasn't any reason for me to bring Mega Beedrill. So. Um, good prep, obviously, if he does bring it. And uh, finally, we have got the Rinderberry Gastrodon, obviously, that helps take on the Thunderous as well. Big, big, big scary mon to me. Uh, obviously, you might have Bloom Doom with the Grass Knot, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, we're issued a challenge by. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, it says we're challenged by him, but I actually issued the challenge, which is a bit weird. But never mind. Never mind. Um, I lead off Inferno because I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably the best thing I have that can lead against this team. Out comes the Mesprit, and straight away I say it out loud, this thing's scarfed. And then I cross my mind saying, he knows that I know he's scarfed. He's going to click U turn. I'm going to get a free U turn myself. <laughs> That's obviously not the case because I just died to a psychic. And um, we're down 6 5 already after one turn. And Infernape, as you would have seen at the team uh, select preview screen, was huge against Paul's team. So, obviously, got to try my hardest now to actually try and take on uh, Paul's team without one of the major threats. So, I'm going on the aggressive straight away here. Um, obviously, I don't know if this thing's going to be Assault Vest. I'm going to click Dark Pulse because I'm going to try and play for the flinch. I know, probably not the best thing, but. Um, I can see now that it, I don't actually know. I still don't know if it's Assault Vest. I haven't actually checked the calcs. Um, but it does about 45, so I'm confident that Psychic with Stab and higher base uh, attack is going to actually kill this thing. So, pretty confident he knows that as well. Um, but I'm going to go for the Psychic anyway, because even if he doesn't want to bring in Mesprit or Scizor, it's still going to do a lot of damage. Um, so, I do click the Psychic, and as you'll see, it still does around 30 to 40%. 30, I'm leaning towards 30% of this Mesprit. So, what I don't know at this point is, um, he doesn't have anything to touch me with Mesprit, but I'm actually going to stay in. Um, just thinking, oh, well, Dark Pulse is going to kill this thing. Um, no, I'm not going to stay in, I am going to switch out. Thinking, I need to keep Necrozma now, because it has got Hidden Power Fire. Um, Mega Scizor, it's, it's my one of few ways of taking it on now at this point. So, uh, I'm going to come in with Tokus actually, and I'm obviously immune to his stab, so I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam, which nearly knocks him out. Um, I'm got, I haven't got any investment, so... Uh, maybe a little bit of investment would have taken this thing out, but that's fine. He sets up the Stealth Rocks. Uh, he's going to switch out because he obviously thinks I may potentially have Stealth Rocks uh, on my... Um, what's it called? The Crosma. That's the one. I'm going to click Defog. I'm going to reveal it. Um, I don't want Stealth Rocks up on my side of the field. As you can see, it's very crucial that I didn't later on in the game. Uh, I'm going to keep this thing uh, because obviously it's max HP. Babiri Berry still intact. It can take on the Scizor very well. So... Now I see this as my chance, I was very much expecting him to set up the Toxic Spikes here, if he had it, or potentially click uh, Scald, or even Sludge Bomb, either way, 
um, I can get a free sub on this thing. So I'm expecting Paul to finally get uh, one extra layer up now because, uh, well, he's thinking what can Gudra do to me? Now I had toyed with uh, Curse Gudra. Um, that would have been something, um, but I decided obviously not to do that in the end because, well, I can just sit here and spam attacks and just do damage to his team. As you can see, I do get lucky here and I do get a crit. I, I think this is especially defensive Toxapex. So uh, it still is, well, doing 60% to this thing is amazing. He's going to go for the Sludge Bomb, and as you'll see, it doesn't break my substitute. So now, Paul's going to have to play the game of just waiting, you know, and healing and trying to recover, and out-recover me, basically, um, to the point where, I, well, I'm just going to attack him, and if he wants to switch around, he can. And he brings in Kevin Owens' his Domfan. That's uh, a sack, which is absolutely fine by me. I mean, uh, Paul's got a very aggressive team this week. He hasn't actually got any switch-ins now, Dom fans, this week. Um, I did have Ice Beam on this thing originally, obviously, to deal with the uh, Thunderous, but I thought, you know what, I, it, the Flamethrower is too important to take down the Mega Scizor, because Mega Scizor is the only thing outside of Gorgeist um, which stops Kartana just cleaning up and any Scarfers, but... Um, the as we know, the Mesprit is already has taken a bit of a hit, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now he brings in this thing. He knows that I mean he could break my sub, but he doesn't actually want to stay in and break my sub because obviously he'll be hit by a Dragon Pulse. So he's going to U-turn out and he's going to switch into uh, his Scizor, obviously knowing that he can take a Dragon Pulse. Um, so I'm going to do that, uh, and it does a decent amount of damage. I mean it kind of reveals he's not specially bulky because that does about 30 percent. Um, it turns out this is actually an adamant scissor, so rather offensive, and to be fair, I didn't have any kind of, well, in my whole draft, I don't have many things that can deal with scissor well. So, uh, in comes the Mesprit, I'm just going to click Flamethrower because I want that thing dead. He very much sees that coming. Um, I'm going to click Flamethrower, it does, you know, about 40% of this thing, so Mesprit is now really weak. We know it's scarfed. We know it's specially orientated, um, so I'm very comfortable in staying in here. He's actually just going to click the Psychic. And as you see, I'm only max HP. I've not got any defense investment or anything like that. That does nothing. And I'm going to kill this thing with Dragon Ball. So I've killed his Domfan. I've killed his uh, Mesprit. And I have weakened his Scizor slightly. So it's actually looking really good at this point. Um, he hasn't got many things that can come in on this thing. Uh, except one, you know, massive threat. That is Garchomp. Um, I couldn't really prep for, Gar uh, prep for Garchomp too much because uh, it's a Garchomp. You know, it could be it could be very a few different sets, but all of them are really good. So um, I am Babiri Berry. Um, obviously, I was expecting Stone Edge to try and deal with Tokus, but he's actually running the Iron Head, and it does pop the Babiri Berry, um, which kind of sucks because obviously Scizor's uh, Bullet Punch is going to do a lot of damage now, um, and he does get a crit and uh, the flinch, which is ironic because I'm a Tokus. So. At this point, I'm like, right, I'm just going to have to actually just click Dazzling Gleam because I can't have this thing behind uh, a sub. Yeah. Choice Bank Cartano actually kills this thing at the range of health, range of health it's at now. Um, he hasn't got leftovers. During the game, I did wonder what he actually had. It turns out he was Salak Berry. Um, sadly, we didn't actually get to see it during the game. I'm going to switch out because I'm expecting another Iron Head here. Uh, and I'm going to go into Gastrodon. And I'm going to take the Iron Head really well. Um, because he does actually go for it. Obviously, I'm going to have to sacrifice the fact that I wasn't poisoned before and I'm now badly poisoned. Um, but I, I just had to do it. I had to try and preserve Tokus to try and get rid of these toxic spikes to stop Gudra um, and Necrozma getting poisoned if possible. So I'm actually going to pull the double here because I was expecting him to switch out. Not entirely sure what to because I could click Ice Beam. Um, maybe it was actually the Toxapex and I was thinking I could get a free Defog, but it turns out he just sets up another sub and I'm like, ah, crap. Okay, I'm going to have to let Tokus guy here to a nine head. I have to click Daz, uh, Daz and Gleam. Um, so the Toxic Spikes are here to stay. Annoyingly, he can't set up rocks again, which is fantastic. Because um, obviously Domfan's dead. Uh, I can't set anything up because Infernape's dead. So no more hazards coming up on the field. I have to go into this thing and pray to God that I can live an earthquake. And thanks to Gastrodon's natural bulk, I will just about hang on. About 30 HP left, something like that. Yeah, 28. Um, and I had to click Ice Beam here. I no messing around. If he wants to switch into Toxpex, that's fine. I just don't want this thing behind a sub. That's my only problem with it. Um, so I'm going to continuously click Ice Beam until I die. Um, so that'll add be to the next turn of Poison. Or it'll be to this thing going for an attack next turn. So uh, he does go for the Earthquake and it does actually take me out, as expected. But 
that's what I wanted. It gives me a free switch into Kartana. Now, I'm very confident as soon as I bring Kartana in, he's going to go into Sizzle. And I should have known this when I, you know, I saw it happening. Um, if I'd have clicked Sacred Sword, then, you know, the Sizzle wouldn't have been a switching because it would have done a lot of damage. Now, I, I keep, if I keep calling it Secret Sword and it's not Secret Sword, it's Sacred Sword, it's one of the two. Um, I'm going to go for the Leaf Blade and it actually does around 20%, which isn't too horrendously bad. Kind of tells me he's more of an offensive set. Um, we already kind of told, could, well, could tell after Dragon Pulse. Um, I'm going to switch into Necrozma here because at this point it's this thing and Gudra that can touch Sizzle. Um, and I had to risk it. Uh, I'm pretty confident he's going to click Roost um, because, you know, this thing at max health on paper looks like it can match up against my team pretty well. Um, so he clicks Roost. And uh, I'm sure if you're going to watch Paul's side as well. This is kind of where he starts to misplay, and I get pretty lucky. Um, so I am max HP, max special attack, life all very similar to last week's set. Uh, and Hidden Power Fight is a guaranteed Oko, I think even if he's max special defense. He goes for Bullet Punch. Turns out he'd actually run enough speed um, to outspeed me. So if he'd clicked U-turn, he'd have killed me and saved this thing as well at max health. And that would have been game over, he'd have won. Because he stayed in click Bullet Punch, he thought I was speed invested because I revealed the um, Rock Polish earlier. He thought I would have had some to try and outspeed some faster things in his team. I didn't. I had four EVs, which brought me up to 100, which brought me up to 200 speed when I was uh, Rock Polish. So um, that kind of played out really nicely for me. Now it's Kartana and a very strong uh, Gudra versus uh, a half HP uh, Garchomp, half HP Toxpex, and this thing. And it's amazing how, I say little, how little this uh, Gigavolt Havoc from the uh, Thunderous does to Gudra. Considering I'm only max HP and not uh, specially defensive invested or assault vest or anything like that, uh, Gigavolt Havoc does the equivalent to less of half of Gudra's health. I love Gudra. I've been wanting to use this thing for ages. I am so happy that I finally have this thing. Um, he's not going to want to stay in. Uh, against my Gudra. He can click U-turn, it'll do some good damage, obviously it's not stab and this thing is more of a special attacker, but uh, he's gonna click U-turn, get on out of here, get some more damage off on Gudra. Uh, that's fine by me. I just click Dragon Pulse here because, you know, if he brings in the Toxapex afterwards, um, uh, it's actually at a point where you can live a Dragon Pulse and a Thunderbolt. If I had clicked two Thunderbolts there, then I would have probably been able to kill this thing. Um, but I can't mess around when I've got a threat such as um, Thunderous in front of me. Now, all I want to do now is I want to let Gudra die against this thing with it left on the field. I need this thing at around half or less, this is Toxapex, for me to clean up with uh, the Kartana. So I'm sitting here, I'm going to click Thunderbolt. Um, really actually praying for once I don't get a crit, and I don't, which is awesome. Um, he goes to the school, actually, and I was half expecting him to try and recover Stormy, but I think at this point, it was beyond him trying to recover Stormy, because I could have kept clicking Thunderbolt. Admittedly, he'd recover more HP than I would be uh, doing damage to him, um, but him trying to click Scald was actually working out in my favour for me, because it guarantees his fingers at a low enough range to die to Kartana. Now, I have one more turn here, and I know that obviously I can't attack this thing, because then it doesn't give Kartana enough time to actually set up. So I am just going to click Substitute on purpose. Now, you, obviously it might have looked like a misclick a second ago. 100% on purpose I clicked Substitute. I didn't want to kill this thing. I wanted to keep this thing in, um, because Paul can't switch it out. If he switches into Thunderous, it's a 2-hit KO and Leaf Blade guaranteed. Um, the Garchomp is at a point where it's guaranteed to die to Leaf Blade, and this thing's going to die to Leaf Blade, so either way, uh, Kartana uh, is going to outspeed the rest of his team. I am Choice Banded, and whatever he wants to bring in, I will start getting a Beast Boost. So he does stay in with Toxpex, I click Leaf Blade, um, we kill the Toxpex, and I'm now at plus one. Now, I was looking at the Calcs, and I knew that it was my best chance, Night Slash could have also potentially done it, um, but I think against Uninvested Thunderous, um, Leaf Blade is 95 to 108 some percent or something like that, so there's a roll in my favour. Turns out Paul had a little bit of bulk, um, and I think it was 43% my favour, 57% his favour, so nearly 50-50, slightly in his favour. As you can see, I get the, the roll to the point where Leaf Blade does kill, and now, obviously, this Garchomp is at uh, half health against a Choice Banded, plus two uh, Kartana, and he cannot touch me. And therefore, 
We managed to win 1-0. Very, 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 very narrowly. Um, I had to say I did win due to Paul, I say, choking. Um, Paul was in full control pretty much until Sizzle went down. And at that point, I had the opening there for Kartana to actually do what I bought it for, just to clean up late game. So, um, thanks to the game, Paul. Really good game. Um, I still think I win the derpiest move by letting Inferno die, type, die turn 1. When I had a free switch into Kudra or Necrozma. So, yeah, um, we all make mistakes, um, but we all learn from them as well. Um, but that is me done for week two of the Pokemon Premier League. If you guys did enjoy uh, the battle this week, make sure you leave a like and obviously some comments as well on what you uh, think of the battle. Um, next week we're against, um, uh, who is it? I can't remember, Toronto Star Raptor, the little Star Raptors. Um, it's going to be a tough game tough game um but yeah guys thanks for watching this video make sure you leave a like and uh yeah i'll see you guys for week three very soon bye